Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how we differentiate fractions that have two functions of x. Function of x in the numerator, that's the top of the fraction, and a function of x in the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. How do we do this? Well, it's very tempting to think that all you need to do is differentiate the top of the fraction and divide it by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. Note that is totally wrong. So how do we do this? Well, it's a rule called the quotient rule. I'll just show you what that rule is. We'll bring it up here. Now if I've got y equals u over v, where u and v are two functions of x, so in this example u, for instance, would be x squared plus 3, and the v, at the bottom of the fraction, would be 5x minus 1. And similarly in this example, u would be 6x, and v would be sine x. So two functions of x being divided by one another. Well, if you have that situation, it can be shown that dy by dx is equal to the bottom of the fraction multiplied by the differential of the top of the fraction, du dx, minus the top of the fraction times the differential of the bottom of the fraction, all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So, let's see how this works. Okay, we'll have a go at the first one here. It's a fairly basic example, but uh, well worth trying. So, we'll put it down as y equals x squared plus 3, all divided by 5x minus 1. So, we have two functions of x. u is the top and v is the bottom. So, according to the formula, dy by dx would equal v, which is the bottom of the fraction, so that's going to be 5x minus 1. Make sure you write that in brackets. In fact, I would always suggest you write everything in brackets, all right, so that you don't get ambiguous statements. So we have 5x minus 1, that's the bottom of the fraction, multiplied by du dx, that's to differentiate the top of the fraction here. So differentiating x squared plus 3 gives 2x. Okay, so that's that part done. Now it says minus, so put the minus in, and then we have u, which is the top of the fraction, which is going to be the x squared plus 3. So you just write that down, again in brackets, x squared plus 3. And we multiply it by dv dx, that's the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So we need to multiply by the differential of 5x minus 1, which is 5. So that goes in there, in brackets. And all of this is divided by, as it says here, v squared. That is the value you've got in the bottom here of your fraction, we square it. So we write 5x minus 1 all squared. Okay, so hopefully you've seen how I've got this from the formula here. Next, what you always do is clean up each term. So I'm not going to multiply this out what I'm just going to do is write the 2x in front of the 5x minus 1. 2x there doesn't need brackets anymore, but the 5x minus 1 does. And in this term, we might as well write the 5 at the front of the bracket, so we have minus 5 bracket x squared plus 3. Now I'd always suggest you do that, just clean up each term. Don't necessarily expand each term. Okay, there'll be cases when that is just unproductive, all right? You'll be giving yourself too much work. Now, in this example, what you, what you should do, I should say, in any example at this stage is just to check to see whether you've got a common factor or common factors in this term and this term. And if you have, I would always suggest you factorize it. But in this example, there are no common factors, so I'm not going to factorize it. So what I'm forced to do now is to expand the brackets. So if I expand the brackets, I've got 10x squared minus 2x for the first one, 
And now if I, if I expand this one, I've got minus 5x squared minus 15. So minus 5x squared minus 15. And that's all divided then by 5x minus 1 all squared. All I need to do now is just tidy the top up. 10x squared minus 5x squared is 5x squared minus 2x and then minus 15 and that's all divided by 5x minus 1 all squared. We have a quadratic expression on the top here. I would check out to see whether that quadratic expression factorizes but in this particular example it doesn't. So that means that this is the end for this question. Right, let's just try this one here. Okay, it's our second example. We'll start then with y equals 6x over sine x. So the u is 6x and the v is the sine x. The top of the fraction, bottom of the fraction. So if we stick to the rule again, let's just put a line down here just to separate the two solutions. And in fact, I'll just move slightly over to the left here. We would have dy by dx equals the bottom, v, so we put sine x, again put everything in brackets, sine x multiplied by the differential of the top. Differential of 6x is 6, put that in brackets minus the top of the fraction multiplied by differential of the bottom of the fraction. So minus top of the fraction, 6x, again put it in brackets, multiplied by differential of the bottom of the fraction. Differential of sine x is cos x. Okay, and that's all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So we've got sine x all squared. Now, as I said, in this example, just tidy up each term here. So if we tidy up the first term here, this would be 6 sine x. So we have 6 sine x. We don't need any brackets anymore for that. And for this one, we could release the brackets and this would still look fine as 6x cos x and it's all divided by sine x all squared which I can write as sine squared x. By the way it's very tempting to see students want to cancel out like things like sine x here with the sine x over here. You cannot do that. You've got two terms on the top here. Sine x would have to be a common factor. It would have to be in this term and this term for you to be able to cancel out the sine x. So don't fall for that, okay? What we now do, as I try to suggest up here to you, when you get to this stage, always see if you can factorize. It won't always be possible, but in this example, you can. You can factorize this. 6 is a common factor. So what I can do is pull out 6, and then I've got sine x minus x cos x and it's all divided by sine squared x. Alright, now I can't cancel out anything here. If there was a sine x behind the 6 here, then yes, I could cancel out the sine x. But there's no common factors here that I can cancel out. So this brings me to the end then of this particular differential. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to use the quotient rule just in the same way that I've done here when you've got a fraction that involves two functions of x being divided by one another, as you can see in this example here. Alright, okay, so that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.